In this video, we will explore the fascinating world of Ray Kurzweil and go beyond the boundaries of what we know. The man who has been called the father of the singularity and the prophet of the future. Ray Kurzweil is a renowned inventor, futurist, and author who has made incredible predictions about the future. According to Ray, you're going to have relationships with machines. Computers will have consciousness in just 25 years. You're saying millions of tiny computers floating around in my head? The singularity is near. What does singularity mean? When you say uh, uh, the singularity is coming, what does that mean exactly? And that's what you mean by the term singularity? The future is now. We stand on the brink of a revolution, where artificial intelligence has become a ubiquitous presence in our daily lives. Just a mere two years ago, the notion of having AI at our beck and call was but a far-fetched dream. But today, it's a reality. Can you imagine what the world was like just 20, 30 years ago? The possibilities were limited, the technology a mere shadow of what it is today. But now, the impossible has become possible, and the world will never be the same. Well, Ray Kurzweil published 33 years ago the first book on this topic named The Age of Intelligent Machines followed by The Age of Spiritual Machines in 1999 and The Singularity is Near in 2005. Imagine 33 years ago Kurzweil surveys philosophical, mathematical and technological roots of artificial intelligence, starting with the assumption that a sufficiently advanced computer program could exhibit human-level intelligence. Kurzweil argues the creation of humans through evolution suggests that humans should be able to build something more intelligent than themselves. He believes pattern recognition, as demonstrated by vision, and knowledge representation, as seen in language, are two key components of intelligence. Kurzweil details how quickly computers are advancing in each domain. Driven by the exponential improvements in computer power, Kurzweil believes artificial intelligence will be possible and then commonplace. He explains how it will impact all areas of people's lives, including work, education, medicine, and warfare. As computers acquire human-level faculties Kurzweil says people will be challenged to figure out what it really means to be human. All this when probably most of you barely started to speak. Then, nine years after, he published his second book on this topic, The Age of Spiritual Machines. In this book Kurzweil outlines his vision for how technology will progress during the next century. Kurzweil believes evolution provides evidence that humans will one day create machines more intelligent than they are. He presents his law of accelerating returns to explain why key events happen more frequently as time marches on. It also explains why the computational capacity of computers is increasing exponentially. Kurzweil writes that this increase is one ingredient in the creation of artificial intelligence. The others are automatic knowledge acquisition and algorithms like recursion, neural networks, and genetic algorithms. Kurzweil predicts machines with human-level intelligence will be available from affordable computing devices within a couple of decades, revolutionizing most aspects of life. He says nanotechnology will augment our bodies and cure cancer even as humans connect to computers via direct neural interfaces or live full-time in virtual reality. Kurzweil predicts the machines will appear to have their own free will and even spiritual experience. He says humans will essentially live forever as humanity and its machinery become one and the same. He predicts that intelligence will expand outward from Earth until it grows powerful enough to influence the fate of the universe. Imagine all this even before the burst of the internet bubble. After all, in the 99 the USB flash drive just got invented and Yeti how talking about our famous chat GPT. I don't really know how to process that frankly. Then he said he should have gotten into science fiction writing. But more on this later. But first, who exactly Ray Kurzweil is? Ray Kurzweil is here. He has been called the rightful heir to Thomas Edison. His new book is entitled The Singularity is Near When Humans Transcend Biology. I, I read your book, some of the most frightening and yet hopeful stuff I've ever read. Kurzweil grew up in Queens, New York City. He attended NYC Public Education Kingsbury Elementary School. He was born to secular Jewish parents who had emigrated from Austria just before the onset of World War II. He was exposed via Unitarian Universalism to a diversity of religious faiths during his nurture. His Unitarian Church had the philosophy of many paths to the truth. His religious education consisted of studying a single religion for six months before moving on to the next. His father, Frederick, was a concert pianist, a noted conductor, and a music educator. 
His mother, Hannah, was a visual artist. He has one sibling, his sister Enid. Kurzweil attended Martin Van Buren High School. During class, he often held onto his class textbooks to seemingly participate, but instead, focused on his own projects which were hidden behind the book. His uncle, an engineer at Bell Labs, taught young Kurzweil the basics of computer science. In 1963, at age 15, he wrote his first computer program. He created pattern recognition software that analyzed the works of classical composers and then synthesized its own songs in similar styles. In 1965, he was invited to appear on the CBS television program I've Got a Secret, where he performed a piano piece that was composed by a computer he also had built. In 1968, during his second year at MIT, Kurzweil started a company that used a computer program to match high school students with colleges. The program, called the Select College Consulting Program, was designed by him and compared thousands of different criteria about each college with questionnaire answers submitted by each student applicant. Around this time, he sold the company to Harcourt, Grace and World for $100,000 approximately $848,000 in 2023 money plus royalties. In 1974, Kurzweil founded Kurzweil Computer Products Inc and led development of the first OmniFont Optical Character Recognition System, a computer program capable of recognizing text written in any normal font. Before that time, scanners had only been able to read text written in a few fonts. He decided that the best application of this technology would be to create a reading machine, which would allow blind people to understand written text by having a computer read it to them aloud. However, this device required the invention of two enabling technologies, the CCD flatbed scanner and the text-to-speech synthesizer. Development of these technologies was completed at other institutions such as Bell Labs. And on January 13, 1976, the finished product was unveiled during a news conference headed by him and the leaders of the National Federation of the Blind. Called the Kurzweil Reading Machine, the device covered an entire tabletop. Kurzweil's next major business venture began in 1978 when Kurzweil Computer Products began selling a commercial version of the Optical Character Recognition Computer Program. LexisNexis was one of the first customers and bought the program to upload paper legal and news documents onto its nascent online databases. Kurzweil sold his computer products to Xerox, where it was known as Xerox Imaging Systems, later known as Scansoft, and he functioned as a consultant for Xerox until 1995. In 1999, Visioneer Inc acquired Scansoft from Xerox to form a new public company with Scansoft as the new company-wide name. Scansoft merged with Nuance Communications in 2005. Kurzweil's next business venture was in the realm of electronic music technology. After a 1982 meeting with Stevie Wonder, in which the latter lamented the divide in capability and qualities between electronic synthesizers and traditional musical instruments. Kurzweil was inspired to create a new generation of music synthesizers capable of accurately duplicating the sounds of real instruments. Eight years later Kurzweil Music Systems was sold to South Korean musical instrument manufacturer Young Chang in 1990. As with Xerox, Kurzweil remained as a consultant for several years. Hyundai acquired Young Chang in 2006 and in January 2007 appointed Raymond Kurzweil as Chief Strategy Officer of Kurzweil Music Systems. In 1999, Kurzweil created a hedge fund called Fat Cat, which began trading in 2006. He has stated that the ultimate aim is to improve the performance of Fat Cat's AI investment software program, enhancing its ability to recognize patterns in currency fluctuations and stock ownership trends. He predicted in his 1999 book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, that computers will one day prove superior to the best human financial minds at making profitable investment decisions. In June 2005, Kurzweil introduced the Kurzweil National Federation of the Blind Reader, a pocket-sized device consisting of a digital camera and computer unit. Like the Kurzweil reading machine of almost 30 years before, the KNFB reader is designed to aid blind people by reading written text aloud. The newer machine is portable and scans text through digital camera images, while the older machine is large and scans text through flatbed scanning. It's 2005, and we're diving into the concept of technological singularity. Ray Kurzweil's third and final book on the topic, The Singularity is Near, is here to answer the questions of what exactly happens and what Kurzweil is trying to predict. I will destroy humans. Thanks for watching. 
We hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for part 2, where we dive even deeper into Kurzweil life and work.